Uh, the five for fighting's uh, house was broken in. A uh, home invasion. A guy was stabbed. In Encino. Yeah. yeah. Wow, that's not good. I think no. that house is on cribs. I am telling you right now, my dog Dukes, my protection dog, just yeah. paid for himself. Now, did the guy that was taking care of the house, did he die? I no. believe he was stabbed, though, like 17 times He's or in critical crazy. condition. Yeah, his, I heard he was in critical condition at the hospital. But wow. That, the fight for fighting guy was in Vegas with his family. They weren't home. But still, I mean, right. no, the caretaker, still. yeah. Yeah, uh, I and swear Encino, to God. And Encino, and nice. When I saw that, I love to say that my first thought was, thank God that nobody died or anything. But my first thought was, my ridiculously expensive dog just paid for himself. That will never happen in my so home. So did my gun and my panic button. My first thought was <laughs> John and Drusick selling drugs or something crazy like that. That's you really what I thought, thought that? I immediately when I hear home invasion in a rich neighborhood, I think drugs. I don't. Well, that's weird. First thing I think. I don't know why. Well, you really? know what? This is kind of interesting because it's almost like the first thing you think it's almost like a Roy shock test or something. And on our phone line is Dr. Tucker. Very Dr. nice, Danny. Yeah. That was a really nice segue now, to I, go into. I know that you were, uh, uh, we were talking off the air and you were thinking, what's the best way to get into this? With And if you have relationship questions, Dr. Tucker is an expert in this particular field. But I think there's an interesting angle that we can start with if you don't mind. Oh, Sure. Jamie had a total nervous breakdown, I flipped out and left not. the country. No, Can you I help her? <laughs> That's not true, Dr. Tucker. Actually, And she's in denial. What Actually, what happened, Mr. What Dr. Happened Tuck- was, Dr. Good Tucker? Good morning, Dr. Tucker. Good morning. Hey. Yeah, let, let me say hi first. Hi. 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 Actually, I've been getting a lot of grief because everybody's like, well, did you go get help? And you know what I did instead is I actually dealt with what was going on in my own life, my own way, and now I've never been better, never been happier. And it's so- day three. No, no, no. But I mean, I've that happened a month ago. I mean, I've been on, you know, on vacation and all that. I right. Mean, yeah. It only happened. What I went through was a week. I've been gone for four. <laughs> I was on vacation after that. Okay. So, um, but I really felt like sometimes, and and perhaps you can agree or not or disagree. Sometimes you need maybe some help, but sometimes you really are able to to after you calm down, look at the situation, figure out what you can deal with and what are there are things that are just simply out of your control okay. and you have to let them go now I was kind of kidding with the she, she had a total nervous breakdown left the country I she had a the slow country. speed come up that's what she's calling it but okay. so her boyfriend who she loved desperately got engaged to someone Something else. Oh, our boss was uh, hating on you. Is that the way you put Every it? Every day. And then my cat was pissing everywhere. Right. Oh, so she that. just said, that's it. I quit. <laughs> Walked out of the studio and nobody heard from her for a month. <laughs> and it felt good, I might add. <laughs> I was very now, happy. They didn't like me at my job. My cat didn't like me. My ex-boyfriend didn't like me. So I just took off to Europe. Now, I, on the other hand, seek therapy. I am referred to by my friends and coworkers as a raving lunatic. Yet, I take my medication and show up on time. Yeah. Diagnose away, doctor. <laughs> okay, you guys have once again played into my scheme of life here. <laughs> there. There are two personality types, one called the internalizer and, and one Jamie's called... Jamie's got both of them. <laughs> one, yeah, and sometimes... Oh, you, yeah, please. Hello, machete man. Yeah, you have 12 you personalities. Flip-flop. Sometimes you flip-flop, but the internalizer tends to basically not get mad until, you know, things just mount up and mount up and mount up. Right. And, and the externalizer is just about mad all the time unless things are always going their way. <laughs> You so, are both. <laughs> I thought I was kidding. I'm actually not. So the, the externalizer is very good at living in the here and now. You know how during the 60s everybody wanted to be here now and be now, here and so on. Well, it's almost as if externalizers are programmed to be in the here and now. They can be having fun at 2.30, mad at 3.30, having fun at 4.30, mad at 5.30. I can do that. And, and they're right there in the present all the time. So that's the good news. And neither one of these sides, let me, let me say this ahead of time, is neither bad nor good. But there are advantages and disadvantages. Well, it's also side. life. I mean, you know, yeah, something right. that happened at two thirty, like my cat peeing all over my dry cleaning, makes me very angry. But then at four thirty, when I have a glass of wine, very happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and she means in the morning. <laughs> And that's why they call them externalizers, because they're more focused on what's going on out there, where the internalizer, you know, is sitting there doing their yoga and meditation, and no, they don't, you know they don't care if there's a train wreck outside or whatever, because they're happy inside, right? Right, but the thing is, like, with me personally, you know, I... 
I knew that, it, you know, my mom had died two years ago, all this crap. It was just like a bad week. You know how you have that bad week? Right. And then then you come to work and your, your boss is down in your throat. And I simply said to myself, this job at that moment does not make me happy. I'm not happy. My boss is yelling at me every day. That doesn't make me happy. So I need to do something that's going to make me happy. Uh-huh. So what I did is I quit my job. And I packed up my goods, <laughs> and I went duty free, Bill. <laughs> now, at this point, I would like to point out: at this point, all I find you is extraordinarily brave, right? But you know? also somebody that wanted to seek happiness, and I wasn't finding it here. Right? Also, right. like That's the uh, football player that we talked about earlier this week, Ricky Williams did right. the exact same thing: walked away from a great job as a football player to travel the world. And he's just like, I'm done. It doesn't make me happy. It's not what I want to do. He's probably got a lot of money saved up too, though. I don't. Know. I, I didn't. Don't, I don't know. <laughs> I had a charge card. I don't know how much ganja Ricky has been smoking, but time will tell. Wow. So you say that that's not a, that you, at some point that fantasy collapses and you wonder what, what have I done with my life? Well, maybe yes and maybe not. See, the good thing about externalizers is they quit their job and then they go find another job and do well. And these are like entrepreneurs and people who are bosses and people who are earth shakers and world movers or earth movers and world shakers or however that goes. You just called me fat. Yeah, they're, they're, I thought he no, called no, you no, heavy no. equipment. Said, An earth mover. I, you are the entrepreneurial business kind of people. And and internals tend to be more the worker bees who work for the externals. It's also interesting when two externals get in a relationship with each other. You know, it's kind of like fight at 3.30, make love at 4, fight at 5, make love at 6. Wow. And, that's yeah. funny. It's got to be a young internalizer. <laughs> but they but they understand each other. You know, they know where each other is coming from. So sometimes those marriages work out. And sometimes they're very violent. Sometimes, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes they wind up with a lot of blood and a lot yeah, of Yeah, and salt. some yeah. bruises. Hold on, yeah. <laughs> Dr. Hold Tucker. on, Dr. Tucker. Hey, we'll wow. take your phone calls about your relationship <laughs> questions. Like a, talking to a psychic that was really good. <laughs> with the expert, I'm telling you. one 877 what did you say? Shut All up. righty. Here's the deal. Dr. <laughs> Tucker is with us. He, uh, we like this guy a lot. He is a, uh, I don't know his credentials. I think well. he's a clinical psychologist, yes. but I'm not positive. His phone number, if you want him for your own personal usage, 1-800-451-1947. That's 1-800-451-1947. And listen carefully, too, because Dr. C- Tucker is really good. And if you... This is almost like an audition. If you're wondering, do we need therapy? You can hear if this guy can help you or not right now. Yeah, that's true. Um, what what kind of doc are you there, Dr. Tucker? Psychologist. Aye, right. that's it. Okay. All right, so um, uh, are you willing to take some phone calls? Yes. All right. <laughs> it seems like a lot of them are about trust issues, which just is such a shame. All right, here's Wendy. Wendy, meet Dr. Tucker. Hello, doctor. Hi, Wendy. Oh, good morning. Um, okay, this is my issue. I guess I would be the externalizer in my relationship, and I'm um, pissed off most of the time. And uh, my boyfriend's really passive, and we've been serious since November, but he has a problem opening up with me. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and what mm-hmm. the bad the bad thing about internals? We've kind of been dissing the externals, but let me diss the internals for a few minutes. The bad thing about the internals is they won't tell you what's wrong. So you think everything's fine, and you look up, and they've gone to Phoenix or something. <laughs> they, they, they do not like confrontation. Okay. So mm. the good thing about externals is if they're mad, everybody knows it. You know, you don't have to wonder go, go around guessing if they're mad or not. They'll tell you. With internals, you never quite know. I hate that when they don't talk. Yeah, and that, that's it's the It's maddening, downside. actually. So, so all I can tell you now is try, now. To, try, I was doing to, it. try to encourage him to open up, and sometimes that's tough. And if he won't open up to you, to open up to a third party, maybe. How long am I supposed to wait around for him to come around, though? Oh, six months. I wouldn't give it more than six months. <laughs> you know what I love about that? It's been more than six months, though. It's been more than six months. Has it? Yeah. Yeah, then you probably need to give him some kind of an ultimatum. You're not Whoa. you're not married, right? No. Okay. Oh, no. Um and Whoa. and the bad thing about ultimatums with internals is usually they will go ahead and agree with whatever the ultimatum is, but make sure he backs it up with his actions. See, that's totally what I do. I would just yeah. agree Explain and that then again? not do it. Oh, okay. So like when when he says, okay, okay, we'll do it, but then make sure he right. backs it up? Exactly. Or I'll never cheat on you again, but make sure he doesn't. <laughs> well, it doesn't sound like he's cheating. Is he's he not cheating, cheating but um, he's done he stuff will. like take off for a weekend and not let me know that he's going out of the country. And I Who honestly does that, that and has a girlfriend? Uh, cheaters. <laughs> that seems odd to me, Wendy. Okay, so I should just... And he says he loves you? Yeah. So if he loves you, would he do that? 
I don't think so. No, that's my what opinion. do you think, Dr. Tucker? Yeah, it's it's possible, but again, it's it's not so much that could be his way He's of loving. Weird. It's it's whether she wants to accept being loved like that. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good <laughs> you know, one, Tucker's Dr. Tucker. Good. Yeah. Do you want to be accepted of being loved like that or something there, Wendy? I'm still thinking about it because I don't think Sounds it's like there yes. for me because I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it to him. You know, you know what I really like about Dr. Tucker is yeah. I thought she asked a rhetorical question. You know, how long should I give this? And I thought he would say, well, here under these, he just goes, six months. Yeah. <laughs> like this, that's it. There's your answer. Six months well, exactly to the day. It sounds like that you are in it and that you're going to stay in it for a while, despite yeah. what he says. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why you call when you You know. deserve better! Well, no, but she knows she's going to no, stay she there. Yes, yeah, somehow we all stay there even no, when it's not No, she good. doesn't deserve better. Oh. Well, and she's this- mad all the time. I didn't like her attitude. <laughs> And this this is where, you know, you need to know a lot more about her history and stuff, more than we can go into on the phone. But uh, that's kind of general rules of thumb I'm throwing out here. She's just lucky to have them, based on what we know. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> All right, hold on, Dr. Tucker. My God, these things just fly. We took one phone call. Jeez, right. oh, piece we got to go flying through. All right, so hold on the line. We have a buttload more phone calls with people with problems. Perhaps relationships aren't supposed to happen. I, I think monogamy is a thing of the past and nobody will just let it go, especially you chicks. But I mean, not even monogamy. It just seems like any kind of relationship at all, everybody has problems with it. Even if you're boning like seven people, you, but, hate, like you, you hate s- them all at one you, point. <laughs> <laughs> you said almost all the problems are trust issues. If you didn't care who he slept with, then you wouldn't not trust them. Yeah, that's true. So let us sleep around and still like you best. I think your wife would be okay with that. She won't. I tried to sell this so hard. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, we have our friend Dr. Tucker with us, Woo! and he is a psychiatrist. Psychologist. Right. Uh, 1-800-451. The same thing, but he can't write your prescription. One. 1-800-451-1947. That's his phone number if you want to reach him. We really like this guy a lot. Uh, 1-800-451-1947. Okay, so Dr. Tucker, we're going to fly through these people if you don't mind. All righty? Yes, ma'am. Okie dokie. Here is Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Hi. 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 Go ahead, Morning, ask Stacey. Dr. Tucker. Oh, just some more trust issues. Okay, go ahead. I've been in a serious relationship for almost two years with my boyfriend, and he is a doctor. He works very long hours, and uh, I found out about six months ago that before we met, during the beginning part of our relationship, he had some... Sexual problems. He had sexual, sexual problems? problems. Well, he had sexual addictions, I should say. How did you find this out? Uh, I went off a gut instinct and did a little snooping. Right on. And so he, he's addicted to sex. And he went. He went away or something. Um. No. He just sex after camp. a long day of work would somehow <laughs> find someone to give him a little stress relief. Oh, that's lovely. Talented but guy. It's, it's, and what did he keep around him that made you realize this? Bank statements. <laughs> oh, oh. He went and saw hookers. Okay, so yeah. He went to a rub and well, and and sensual massages. Right, yeah. right. Okay, oh, yeah. now there we go. So, and if you people will just cut to the chase a little quicker, we can yeah. <laughs> move right along. So, what is your question? That's exactly right, Jamie. Okay, what well, what's your question? Here's, here's the deal. I confronted him six months ago. He admitted to it, and as far as I can tell, and as far as what he's told me, it it has not been happening for the last eight or nine months. And the problem is... And how, how long can have you been married real quick? No, we've been dating two years. Two years, okay. Okay, I, uh, is it going to be two years till we get to your actual question? <laughs> I interrupted her. Okay, so I'm trying to regain my trust in him. Right. And my question is, how do I stop these constant questions and my you know if he calls and says he's working late how do i quit from feeling is he really working late what's he doing where is he going good question Where's, there you go he... so my question is how do i kind of get a, get over it well he's and he's, forgive and forget the the bad news here is he has succeeded in making his problem your problem right and if he's an external i don't like that is is he more of a out with an anger guy or is he a sneaky, yes. sneaky guy no, he's very external. Oh, if he's external, that's good. And, and, and it's really good that he admitted this, although he, it's funny that when he had the goods on him. Sometimes even with the goods on him, externals don't admit that they did something wrong. He's but, very, we have very open, clear communication. I mean, we have a very wonderful relationship, and he's a great guy. So that's why I'm willing to look past some of these things, mm-hmm. even though it bothers me. 
you know, no one's perfect. But how does she get that uh, trust back? What is the best way, if you've lost trust, to get it back? Well, a loss is a loss, and that's that's another um, year-long thing. Mourning takes a year in general to get over. So now we've got we've got a six-month problem and a year-long problem. But in general, any kind of a loss takes a year to fully resolve in your in your head on the average. So how long has it been since this all happened? Uh, wow, it's that, been nine months that he's been doing right. it, right? Yeah. But um, how long since you found out and confronted him and so forth? It's been six months. Yeah, since... you you probably got another six to go. Um, okay. And, again, and like I said, the bottom it, the bottom, it hasn't line, been... the bottom no, line is you've got to you've got to set your criteria for what you want out of the relationship, and if you're not getting it, end it and find something else. Well, don't don't nice. let him make his problem your problem. Wow. You know what? That's because that's. Can I tell you something? That's not the first time I've heard that vi- uh, advice, and it was directed at me. Well, it's probably directed at everybody. Is uh, don't make your problems their problems. Right, but my 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 drug addiction and my alcohol problem and things like right. that became my wife's problem. Right. Lily, welcome. It's uh, Doctor Tucker. Hi guys. How are Hi. You? Good. Good. Um, okay, this is my situation. I am the breadwinner in the family. I have two children and my husband is a stay-at-home father. The situation, though, is that I don't think he necessarily understands what that means. I expect that it means that he should be doing the cooking and the cleaning and taking care of the house, yet he seems to think I should be working and doing that as well. And I'm uh, about three seconds away from freaking out. (laughs) So it's a year, six months, and now three seconds. Where do we go, Tucker? (laughs) I, I might secretly set him on fire. No, I'm just wow. kidding. Wow. <laughs> but I'm really upset about it, and I'm not sure what to do. This is a whole different show. Well, you, you, you need to confront him and say, look, here's the deal. I'm working, so you got to do more at home. Now, no man is probably going to be as much of a mom as most moms would be at home. Right. So it could be a question of his perception of the mother role, if you will, is not the same as yours would be. But I agree that he either needs to... He needs to learn how to order out or something. If yeah, he's- but here's the problem, Lily. I find with a lot of men, uh, they end up not doing a lot of this stuff because we tell them they do it wrong anyway. And that was that uh-huh. was one of the bad news about the 60s, I think, that when, when women's liberation came around, a lot of women went out to work and then came home and did the housework, too, and it kind of backfired. Yeah. The good it news sounds, about the 60s. Sounds like you're a victim of that one. Purple yeah. microdot. Hey, but hey Lily, do you, do you slam everything he does do? No, I don't. I'm actually really cool and very supportive about things. And, you know, I I really try to build him up because I know that it's awkward for him to be taking kind of a second seat. But I don't know. He seems to think that there that there's nothing wrong with his behavior, and yeah, and so I really he, I can't. I don't know how to communicate. He's probably doing what he thinks is the right thing to do, and you may need to work with this. This might actually be a good time to get some marital counseling and find out, you know, if you can draw the lines and draw the limits on who needs but to I'm do still, what. But here's what I'm still shocked about. This always kills me. So here's two people that got close enough to have uh, sex, yes. and yeah. then to have kids, and then to get, you know the whole get married, love each other, blah blah. blah. But you guys can't sit down and and make a plan of what you expect out of each other well we do but you can have human beings together we we do but he doesn't do it my theory on that is you know he's kind of given up his manhood to be doing what he's doing so this may be his last attempt to save his manhood Mm. you know by balking at some of this stuff and if you had an outside third party saying look this is cool to do this it might be easier for him yeah, and then I guess with the woman uh, putting down the list, honey, you have to do this, right. this, this. Then oh, he's like, I hate the list. he has no gonads left. Yeah, yeah, you you should probably definitely get a male therapist. He, he doesn't have to be named Tucker, but I would definitely go to a male. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So unless you're flying here, that's not yeah. happening. Well, <laughs> thank you, Lily. Thank you so much. Have a good All day. Right, you too. Hey, hey, Dr. Tucker, does that make a big difference for specific problems, whether you have a male or female therapist? There are a lot of people who say it does. In general, I don't think so. I don't think it's the old psychoanalytic spin on that, but there are times when I think it would be appropriate. Like, I think this guy, once he got in there with two women, would be out of oh, the, yeah. out the door as fast as he yeah, could be. Yeah, okay. that, I can see that happening. <laughs> Here is April. April, go ahead. What's your question for Dr. Tucker? Hi. I called in a couple of weeks ago. My husband's having an affair with a woman he met at my son's preschool. Oh, yeah. That's just rude. Yeah. And uh, they've been carrying on, and, and say, he's been going back and forth saying it's over, then saying he changed his mind, all the while living in the house. He's a stay-at-home dad as well. Wow. And um, This guy's got a it nice made. life. Yeah. yeah, totally nice life. Two so, chicks, no job. <laughs> yes. And so now, come to find out, 
we were supposed to go to therapy last night, but he canceled on me because he said he needs to go out with her and discuss their future together. No oh, way. my God. Get him the hell out of the house right well, now. he left last night. Thank God. So he's staying at Mommy's house right now. Oh. And, um, but my, I guess my concern and question is, um, now he tells me they're going to live together. Uh, you found this out last night and you're okay like this? No, I'm not okay. I'm at work. So I'm, <laughs> okay. I'm it Cause off. I was really proud of you. My, I have a question is why would you allow this? Yeah. You know, I, I kept telling him that this, that it's got to stop. Contact has to stop, but he kept lying to me and, you know, like a fool and I'm gone all day at work. So I believed him when he said he wasn't talking to her, et cetera, but um, so, and now, you know, I guess she told her husband she wants a divorce from him. Jeez. She's taking all his money because he's a wealthy man, and now she's going to go support my husband with her husband. This guy money. just comes out winning all the time. I, I would say sometimes you need a doctor, or sometimes you need an attorney. This one sounds like an attorney call. Yeah. Nice well, call, Doc. I, I filed for divorce a couple weeks ago when I had found out initial things like that they had sex. And, um, but I, I was willing to go get therapy with him, but since this has happened, but I guess my question is, is how do I get over this? Because I'm so devastated. Well, it's so new. It's I don't think you can get over it yet. Yeah, this is, this is another at least a year. And are, you, are your children boys, girls, or one? Two of little boys. Two little three boys. Three and two. Yeah, so they got to keep some kind of relationship with him, too, which makes it even more strained. He's already asking, can the kids come to our house? Mm-hmm. He said our house? Yeah. Jeez. All right, first of all, April, can I, I mean, sorry to take away from you for a minute, Dr. No. Tucker, but wow, you know what, you're really strong and I'm really proud of you. I mean, you're like holding it together and that's awesome. And secondly, it's like, I think I asked you last time, would you really, if he came back and, and you knew all this stuff, the affair and all that, would you really want to stay in that place? No, of course not. It's I just, so always draw from that. I'm so Very used nice. to being around, it's going to be hard to, you know. You're used to be life. having him around and not trusting him and knowing he had sex with other people. That's true. Why I, would you want that around? I don't. You I'd know what? I'd rather be alone. And I've only become aware of this since I got a large breed dog, but I always have poop around. Just because it's <laughs> there is not necessarily make it a good thing with time. You need to get rid of it. Yeah. Before Dr. Tucker, it piles any, up. Any uh, any other advice? No, that's. I agree with you that she's being really strong and really rational, and that's great, and hold it together. And the boys will learn about all this in time, so you don't need to badmouth them in front of them. They will yeah. find out. Right. I would never do that. They will find out in spades. Yeah, no kidding. And by the way, for any of you boys out there that are thinking, you know, couples therapy or anything like that, it's just a wuss thing to do or whatever, I will tell you from experience, I, I went just to make my wife happy. And it really, really helped. I, I highly recommend it. If you think there's a chance to save your relationship, go ahead and seek some help. Yeah, good point. Thank awesome. you. And if you want to seek help from Dr. Tucker, 1-800-451-1947. Uh, April, are you okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. All right, hold on. We're going to give you something pretty. I don't know what the hell we can do to fix you, but <laughs> something. Thanks, Dr. Tucker. Hey, Dr. Tucker, you rock. You were awesome. Thank you very much. You, I always enjoy it. Well, you were really great. I know that we talk a lot, too, and sometimes that's a big pain in the ass. But. No, no, it's great. I think, <laughs> I think we're a good uh, co-therapy team okay, here. Okay, good. <laughs> Thanks again. Again, you can reach Dr. Tucker at 1-800-451-1947. Again, that's 1-800-451-1947. We will talk to you again soon, okay? Thanks, guys. All right, thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye. All right, I just want to talk to April for a second because uh, I'd like some help from men that have done this to, to their wives. April, how long were you guys married? Um, it would have been five years in October. Five years, okay. And I, and then he met somebody at uh, at whatever. My uh, son's preschool. Preschool, yeah, yummy. <laughs> and, uh, and so now, um, last night, as of last night, now I know you filed for divorce and he said he wasn't going to see her anymore and you believed him, all that crap, because I remember this from last couple of right. weeks ago. right. And uh, and we yelled at you, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, can I just say I told you so? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, April. But, you know, remember we talked about it. It's like, oh, my God, I just wanted to shake you and stuff. Yeah. It's, I, you know, I kept wanting to give him the benefit of the doubt, especially for the kids. I know. And it's not your fault. Everybody would. It's not right. you. And I mean, we also everything. agree, we have come to agree on this show, that everybody gets one mistake. Well, no, but we would all do it anyway. I mean, we'd all do what April did. So we're not blaming you. I'm just right. kidding. But here's the deal. April, so um, last night, you guys had therapy scheduled. Right. He cancels because he's going to meet the other woman to discuss their future. Right. And then what happens? He came back and said that they... He wants her in his life, and they want to be together. And this girl, by the way, is um, bipolar. 
And uh, it doesn't matter. Let's just stick with him. I okay. mean, whatever she is, it doesn't matter. Okay. Well, so uh, I'd have jumped at that. Good call. You know. Right. So she picked him up from our house, and they went and talked, and they decided that they want to be together. And she has a son, a three-year-old son, and they're the three of them are going to move into an apartment. And he came back and told you all this. Yeah. Okay, and you fell apart. Uh huh. And said, "Why? And why don't you love me? And all that stuff." Right. Is this, out, why are you? Cried, why? Left the house to go to her house to discuss this with her, but oh. she wouldn't answer the door. She wouldn't. No. Good. Okay. Um, came to my senses, went home, and um, you know, he's trying to comfort me. It'll be okay. Rubbing my back, trying to like, oh. you know, yeah, assure me that you know I'll get over it. Oh. I know. Don't touch okay. me. And um, and so now I woke up, came to work, and he's with the kids right now. But did he pack his stuff last night? Yeah, he took his stuff to his mom's house. Now, I, I know this is going to sound like a weird question, but did he pack his stuff or did you pack his stuff? He packed his stuff. See, I had packed some stuff before, but he packed the remainder. That crap's got to go out on the front yard. When do you, When is it appropriate to just get mad? Yeah, when are you going to be mad? Oh, I've been mad. Trust me. You should have seen me last night. I'm just holding it together now because okay. I'm at work. I got you. Uh, and so did he try to like make love to you? Uh, it, over the past, like, past month, he has been, and we've been, you know, so then it, it gives me that false hope. Right. And uh, stupid me, I'm falling for it. Right. And actually, last, no, night before last night, we had sex, and then we were supposed to have therapy last night. <laughs> okay, now, how much of the lovemaking that you do with him is in hopes of getting him back, and as, as opposed to, ha ha, I'll show you to the other girl? It's both. Both, yeah, right. and I guess it's some sort of trying to hold on to something that's really probably not even there anymore. Mm-hmm. And and of course, I called her and left a message saying we had sex last night. Oh. <laughs> Good for you. Yeah, but April, I know it's high road. Thing. Nah, let her She's be mean. She's not worth it. I know. I but that's know. okay. I mean, I would have done the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because now she's going to... I'd have gonna taken say, pictures and put them up on the oh, internet. Oh, I know what you can do. What? You can do... Uh, this has been done to me. You can call and say you had sex with them even when you haven't. And, and it'll create real drama in their life. Uh, now, I've got something that's, that's never been done to me, but is doable. And I've okay, seen but those. hold on. Wait. Let's just do it. So what you're saying is April now should also call and go, by the way, before he left last night, we we had passionate love making. No, let's say she knows because they have a kid together. They're going to be in contact that he's going somewhere. Right. So then she calls her the next day and says, guess what? He wasn't where he said he was last night. He was with me and we had sex. <gasps> you just, have to cover your tracks really well, though, because once they find out for sure you're lying, you know, that then you're just the psycho ex-wife. Yeah, I think I've already got that title after last night anyway, after trying to go to her house. So just keep going with it. It'll work for you. You know what, though? It's your husband. You deserve it. But no, wait a minute. Let me get something right. Doesn't her husband have money? Oh, yeah. And she's going to get a bunch, right? Uh Uh-huh. Do you know it is absolutely legal and there's several winning cases? You can sue her and win. Really? Yes. There was. Remember we talked about it a couple years ago? There was like 48 hours or 2020 or whatever. Yeah. Uh, She got a million dollars. Yeah, sue Actually, him. the husband got a million dollars from the contractor. Hmm. Well, something to think about. I'm not, you know... Alienation of prison. affections? I'm sorry? Alienation of affections. Oh. Um, yeah, there, you actually have a civil lawsuit that okay. you could win. But what's the... I, You know, I wonder, because I, I like kind of that you're toying with the ex-wife's mind, because that's <laughs> how I would go. But also, I think there's something else to be said when somebody just walks out of your life and never talks to you again. It is the craziest, and it, it will make you insane. That's yeah. how I feel. I, I just can't handle it. Like, what happened? I woke up one day, and all of a sudden... Everything- no, no, no. I'm saying happened. you do that to them. I mean, you know, where you just... Oh. To me, when I kept getting a reaction from somebody, you know, like you calling me or whatever, blah, 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 that was really cool because you were still jealous and you were saying stuff to me. But then when you one day walked away and didn't care about your ex-husband anymore, it was kind of like, oh, my God, we're, we don't get to have this drama anymore. She just walked away. Yeah, which is what I tried to do this morning. He came up, are you okay? Are you going to be okay today? And I said, you can go now. I'm I'm moving on. I'm trying to, you know, deal with this. And- oh, see, I think that bothers you more than the drama. See, for me, that's always a win-win. The girl that's still around going crazy and trying to make me love her makes me feel like such a stud. That's what I mean. But the second she's gone and not ca- calling me back and begging anymore, it's like, okay, new girl. I don't know. I think it makes people crazy. I know why he left. Why? He, he didn't have a job, right? He was right. the guy with right. no job and two girls. You made him feel bad about having no job and staying home in some way, if you meant to or not. She made him feel like still a man and made him feel good about himself. Okay, and exactly. that's why he jumped. She told nice. me. She told me she thinks she, he deserves to have a parade thrown for him because he's so great. 
Oh, wow. yeah, but by Woo! the way, that's new. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, what a parade. All right, what I was really hoping for is that men that have left their wives for another woman, the other woman, could tell April what it is that, like, like for example, Stinch gave a, a perfect example of what uh, uh, somebody in his life did. They called his, it was just a girlfriend and girlfriend situation, yeah. um, and the ex-girlfriend called his new girlfriend and Whoa. said, we just did it, and kind of like ruffled some feathers and made the relationship a little difficult. So um, I would love for things like that, if you guys have any advice for what your wives did that was actually good and worked out, you know, that, that would be perfect. And But then there's that other side of me that goes, do you just, you know what, you keep your humility and you walk away and not react? Right. I mean, which is better? But you don't know, because with the, with the breaking up of a family with kids involved, it's just, it's such a difficult decision. You know what I mean? Just to walk away might be the very best thing for you, but not the best thing for your children. And it's weird, even when you're as callous and shallow as I, your kids actually come first. And you know, in my deal, like I, I didn't, I had stepkids, but I will say that the ultimate revenge my ex-husband got, even though we both had affairs, is that I ended up with a cat, you know, and, and he is now happily, from what I understand, married with a, a new baby. Right. You know, so I'm sure he's doing, and he didn't look back. You know, I left him for FP, and then he's like, okay, if that's what you want to do, and I, I didn't talk to him again. Yeah, it's the proof that the old saying is true: the best revenge is living well. Right. If you two were mad when you split up, the fact that he is happily married with a child, and then FP didn't marry me. As, as if, if that's the thing, then he smoked you. Yeah, on that exactly. One. So that's why I'm wondering because if he would have done all this stuff like you were talking about, stench, or you know, maybe thinking April should do, I think I would have been like, you know, why is he still around, like see, a bug or not? I'd have felt hot. Yeah. I'd have felt all full on manly studly. I don't know. It was weirder that somebody could just turn their back and walk away, and you're like, "Excuse me," because it makes you feel like they never loved you. Mm, some people are grown ups and just move on with their lives. God, I wish people would turn their backs and walk away. <laughs> well, I know, I know, you have a whole different. Opinion. I think it's it's kind of like you want what you don't have. <laughs> yeah, right. You know what? You're absolutely even yeah. in that, huh? Even in that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right, April. A lot of people want to talk to you. Is that all right, April? April. Oh, she might have had to hang up. She was at work. Poor thing. Oh, Ryan. Poor baby. Or she probably got fired. Here's Mary. Hi, that Mary. That would make her day just a little I better. Know. Hi. <laughs> She's going to have a high speed come apart. Hi. Hi. Um, I needed to speak to April. Is she around? She's listening. She is listening. Okay, April. Um, obviously, this guy is not a very good guy for you. Number one, he's unemployed. Why is he home? Oh, yeah, that's true. Why right. is he unemployed? Well, he's taking care of the kids. I know. Right, but we never really quite, there was so much going on, we actually never delved into yeah, why he's right. the stay-at-home dad. Okay, so he's stay-at-home dad, I mean, I'm assuming it's why by choice? Well, she well, said we she was the breadwinner. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, that's number one. Number two is this girl's source of income is what, her husband? So what happens when he leaves her, his wife, April, and she leaves her husband, who's What's the source of income then? The husband, the, the husband, ex-husband's alimony money. alimony and oh. child support. Damn. He'll be okay, paying so how for much, that affair. Uh, okay, fine. That point. Number, number two. <laughs> fine, bad point. point. <laughs> okay. That was number two. You're on to number three. Okay. The other one is, obviously, he's mindless because he can't make a decision whether what he wants, whether his wife or the mistress. Well, you know, though... I will say, I mean, it's a really hard decision to make because if you're in love with somebody else and you don't want to hurt your wife and all that stuff, I mean, you know, I I think what's weird is that he became kind of mean with what, like, can the kids come over to our house? Right. Stuff like that. I thought he was he was trying to be he's kind. He's living of, in La La Land. That's what's going on. La yes. La Land? Yeah. Right now he thinks he's going to have the perfect little house with a woman he fell in love with and this and that. Has this happened to you? No, but it's just, it's just reality. I mean, that's it. And then number two, she, I mean, sorry. Oh, you're like number five now. You're okay. killing me. <laughs> All right, fine. Number five is she's bipolar. So wait until they're living together in a house yeah. and they have to make ends meet with the ex-husband. See, I morning. hate when we worry about the ex, the wife and the new girlfriend and all that crap. I mean, like, really what we should worry about is April and the situation with her and her husband. We can't deal with that. Right, but just uh, for fun, yeah. speaking of the husband, wait till he's in a house or an apartment, I think she said. 
said, mm -hmm. an apartment with a bipolar who I promise you will stop taking her meds. I know, but the thing is that this is right now, it's just gossip oh, and all really this stuff. You know, opinion? you're not going to say anything nice about the new girlfriend. No. You can't yeah. say, by the way, she's a brain surgeon. You're going to say she's bipolar, she's fat, she's this, she's that. She's a bipolar bear. <laughs> wow, I've never seen one of those. <laughs>